Right. Well, welcome to the first of um, virtual behind the scenes. And um, we're glad to do this. We're happy to do this. Um, we always have a ton of stuff happening behind the scenes. And we just thought it's fall. It's time to give you a heads up about that. And so one of the first things I wanted to um, bring to your attention, if you hadn't heard it already, is, um, and Mike kind of alluded to it in service, but I just want to uh, formally thank one of our staff people, and that's Jennifer O'Keefe. She has served as a little kid zone captain for, oh gosh, four or five years. And uh, she recently stepped down wanting to take uh, the staff title off and put the volunteer hat back on. Uh, um, she really joined NEC at a time when we really needed someone just like her. Jennifer has a great ability to be a helper. Um, it doesn't matter how busy she is or how much she has on her plate. If she sees anybody that needs anything, uh, she is the first to jump in. Uh, very extremely reliable, has become one of my um, very dear friends too. And just want to thank Jennifer publicly for her service. Um, so what's happening with Kids Home? Uh, as we as we say goodbye to Jennifer, and I'm going to publicly say Jennifer said she's going to continue volunteering. So everyone heard that, right? Yes. So um, we're thrilled that she uh, still is going to be calling NEC her home and her community and her place where she is going to continue to serve. Um, with Kid Zone uh, right now not being open, but certainly. Uh, doing all we can to continue to engage families online. Laura Laird is going to be stepping into the position of Kid Zone Captain, which means she's going to oversee Little Kid Zone and Big Kid Zone. And as a little plug to, what? Oh, Cliff needs to come in, Mike. Sorry, I, I, I took my mind, eyes off the waiting room. There's, there's about five I'm people so or so uh, are just waiting. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so Laura Lee is going to become um, on Kids Own Captain. And as a little plug there, Kids Own Families, um, keep your eyes open. You, we are going to be delivering a special gift to our Kids Own Families. And we're not just talking virtually. So keep your eyes peeled for uh, kind of a relaunching of Kids Own in the next few weeks. And uh, thank you for those families that are continuing to, uh, to tune in. Uh, we really uh, love connecting with you. And we also thank our Kids Own volunteers that have um, remained engaged as well. So that is the news on the Kids Own front. Mike? A few more people. I'm letting your mom in right now, Heather. Oh, she's going to be upset she missed my part. <laughs> uh, this is actually working out pretty good. Hopefully the, uh, the video will work out okay. Uh, I got a six-minute video tour of our building, but before I do, I want to talk about a new ministry category that we're creating at New England Chapel, and it's, it's something that, that Heather's moving into and, and is going to oversee, and uh, there's so many ways to talk about this. Uh, I'm used to talking about it from an in-house, like um, uh, in the kitchen sort of way, but I want to talk about it from a um, from a, a first timer coming in sort of way. And I want to talk about it in, in terms of fantasy football. Uh, does anybody play fantasy football here or, or, or involved in or, or have? Um, maybe you have, maybe you're not. There's a bunch of uh, um, video screens muted, so I can't tell. But uh, uh, I've never done it. In my mind, I've, I was always like, I don't need any distractions. Uh, um, I only really want to watch the Patriots. I don't care about other, you know, I, and so I've never done it. But this year in the pandemic, um, our, our, our youth director who lives below me, um, uh, I was, I was, uh, he said, hey, Mike, I have one more spot in, in, my, in, in my league. In my, um, would you like to join? And I said, sure. I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know how to draft people. I don't know how to trade people. I don't know. I don't know anything about anything. I don't know how to do it. Uh, he said, just download the app. Right. And so I, one thing that I was amazed about is how, uh, how much help there is out there for someone trying to join the fantasy football league. Right. And so first of all, I download the app and it pops up a bunch of different articles to help me get started. Uh, it says uh, how to draft players, how to trade players. What if your player gets on injured reserve? And, and so there are all these articles right at my fingertips. Um, and then they start reminding me two days before draft, uh, you, you should figure, you should do this, this, and this. Um, so I end up, uh, I end up, you know, 
doing a successful draft, even though I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, there was, there was all kinds of helps. And then into our first week, um, I start getting these uh, news articles saying, hey, these people are injured, <laughs> take them off your roster or, or you know, and uh, there was just such a connectedness around fantasy football, even though I had no clue what I was doing. Um, a complete fantasy rookie. I've never done fantasy for any sport, anything, and I'm doing fine. Actually, Josh would be uh, slow to admit that um, – uh, I, I'm actually um, kicking some major major booty in my first week of NFL. It's sheer luck because I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, but but uh, right now I'm winning my division. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. But uh, why I'm telling you all that is because um, I was brand new to a, a world that I had knew nothing about. And they made it really, really easy for me to connect, to navigate, and to plug into different different aspects um, of the of the um, uh, what would you call it a program league, league. yeah <laughs> league yeah league and and I thought man um, uh, this is a great illustration for the uh, ministry category we're creating uh, we're creating this mini ministry category called community connections and. Uh, um, one of the things that New England Chapel has always prided itself in doing is, is being really standoffish uh, when, you, when, when we needed to. So we would give, uh, we're not, uh, we don't make visitors stand up. We don't make visitors sign a guest book. Uh, uh, we, keep, we really protect and allow for privacy. We allow for anonymity. And you could come into church and sit in the very back row when we had services <laughs> um, um, uh, together, um, you could sit in the back row for for one week or one year if you wanted, and if you just until you felt safe. And so, um, and, and so, New England Chapel wants to uh, protect that privacy, protect that an anonymity. But the one thing we do want to do is not throw the baby out with the bathwater, and not. Uh, so there are people who want to know how do I get to the. Uh, um, they need the steps and the connections and and uh, the PR and the marketing that I needed for my fantasy football league for this um, this weird unique thing that they haven't tried before called church, and and that's really what uh, um, community community connections is doing. It's going to help people connect to opportunities where they can uh, uh, connect with God and connect with others, and. Uh, uh, we really don't have a unified process for that. And it's going to involve some marketing. It's going to involve some branding. It's going to involve some uh, personal connections and some, um, and some, all the ways that a, a lot of other organizations and um, uh, communities are great at, but the church is really slow to, sl slow to grow in. And, and Heather's going to um, head up that. She, had, she, had, she has done a lot of that already for KidZone. If, you, if you've been a part of KidZone, if you've been a parent, um, uh, that's probably the the one avenue where volunteers and leaders and participants are the most informed, most connected. And so we're asking Heather to leverage her skills that she's honed through KidZone for the sake of the uh, greater church. Heather, you want to add anything to that? No, I was just, I was fascinated to, uh, that you're using a football analogy, um, <laughs> but that was great. And I'm really excited um, about it. Uh, I came into New England Chapel 10 plus years ago, uh, I know what it feels like to be a first time visitor. I know what it feels like to re-engage uh, faith in my life. And I, when, upon opening this new building, there's such a great opportunity to, um, to help people become part of our community when, when they're ready. So the most exciting part for me is the uh, personal connection part and getting to know people and um, working across all ministries to make a pathway available. Uh, for people to become engaged, not push them down the path, but make it visible. And so I'm, uh, I'm thrilled to be doing it. Uh, it feels a little weird to step a, uh, away a bit from KidZone, but uh, I'll never be far away because that's certainly a huge connection point for many people too. So um, yeah, looking forward to it. All right, thanks. Well, we're going to uh, move, uh, so we'll give you time to ask any questions, but uh, we're going to move right to a uh, virtual tour of the building. Many of you guys are probably like, where are we at? Um, and so uh, 
I'm, I'm hoping I have earbuds in now so we don't create feedback. There's four of us streaming this at the office. So I'm going to actually pull these out uh, so that, cause I think it might affect your ability to watch this video. So um, bear with me for a second. I'm going to, I'm going to adjust my speakers here. Mike, while you're doing that, I just want to certainly, if you have any questions you want to put in the chat area, please go ahead and do that. Um, if any come up while you're watching the video, um, then we'll take live questions after too. Okay, here we go. If I can hit play, where is the play? Here it is. Can you guys hear that? No. Did you did you hit the um, audio? Or... <laughs> I'll be I'll be right there. <sighs> Let's try this. I think I got it, Heather. Let's try this now. Bear with <laughs> you I like this frozen picture of you, though, really. Thank you. Can you hear that? You know what's no. coming out of my earbuds, which is not a good thing. All right, hold on. Hold on one more second. We will figure this out. Audio. Mike, while you, when you press um, share your screen, there is an option on the bottom. Okay. It says share computer, computer audio. Okay. Oh, um, sweet. You, okay. Nice. Thank you. Optimize for sharing video clip. Sweet. All right, let's try it now. You guys ready? Good morning, everyone. I'm here at 300 East Central Street, and I'm here to answer a question that's been coming in more and more frequently. And instead of answering it with just my words and trying to articulate a descriptive response, I decided to video it. And that question is, how is the building coming along? Let me step inside and show you how the building's coming. Okay, here we go. All right, so I'm walking into the lobby here and uh, it might look a little crazy, but, um, and I hope you can see this, but what, what, what we're seeing is we're stepping into a really wide open space. There is a lot of room, um, a, a, a visual clearance for everybody. And uh, what you'll find if you're a first time guest, you've never been in our building, you'll find that everything's right at your, your eyesight. And so you'll look over here and even though there's no doorway yet, <laughs> you'll see a cafe, you'll see the entrance to the sanctuary, you'll see a, uh, a guest service booth right there, you'll see kid zone host uh, um, desk over there, and then you'll see uh, what's going to become our small chapel area. So, so, so we're having an open area small chapel that's sunken down. Um, there's about a two foot drop right here and there'll be a rail system and some stairs and, and, and a, a ramp over there. Um, and uh, our small chapel area will be sunken down and we could, we could put 50, 60 chairs in there if we want, or we could put a couple couches uh, depending, uh, and, and some chairs depending on the uh, occasion. It's gonna be a really multifunctional spot. Over here in the corner um, where you see all this insulation, this actually is going to be the same level of where I'm standing. That floor is gonna carry all the way across to the wall and this is going to be just a, 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 a have a family room look it's going to be an open space place to hang out uh, i'm going to walk you through a, a quick tour and uh, point out some of the cooler things as we go now the the area of our construction that's behind the most is plumbing <laughs> but this coming week i think it's supposed to be getting underway <laughs> right here you see a bunch of dirt um, that's going to be a, a a woman's room a men's room and over here there's this, this small little room here that's going to be our our prayer room. And um, what's cool about it is you can access the prayer room from the sanctuary, which that's the sanctuary doors, the, the lower uh, side doors of the sanctuary. Um, let me take you th through my favorite spot in, in the uh, building so far, and that's Kid Zone. There will be a cool uh, ramp, much cooler than this ramp. But uh, Kid, Kid Zone has really come alive. I've been staring at the plans for really over a year, 
and I liked it on paper. I like it even more with the studs a a up and uh, where you can see the room. So I'm going to walk you down. Uh, there'll be a check-in area, and uh, this big door, uh, this big doorway here is big kid zone. This one is little kid zone. And as we walk in, you'll see. Uh, hopefully, this comes through on video, but you'll see the five different classrooms, a big wide open space. The classrooms are big, and uh, we were able to make some tweaks to adjust for social distancing a little bit. And uh, because um, the building was underway in the middle of the pandemic, so that was really to our benefit. And so we made some small adjustments that'll really help. But here's Big Kid Zone, huge open space, five big classrooms, and a Big Kid Zone office and uh, uh, prep room. And uh, um, connecting the uh, Big Kid Zone office to the rest of the offices is this, this doorway. If you go through it, uh, you'll just start seeing all kinds of little rooms. These are all our offices. Um, and here is the youth room. It's a thousand square foot youth room that's going to be really decked out with some cool stuff. We have more offices. There'll be an office entryway there. Uh, we, uh, on this side of the hallway, we get offices and conference rooms. And I want to point up, if I could do this here, with the up here in the ceiling. Uh, you see that there's square air duct. It's, it's uh, also noise insulated. Everything's going to be nice and quiet. We have high energy efficient rooftop units. And so uh, between all that insulation you saw out front, uh, all the outward wa outer walls are going to be insulated with the high uh, efficiency um, appliances. We're going to save a lot of money on our utility bills and reduce our energy footprint. So I'm pretty excited about this. This is more than said. These are conference rooms. A uh, little storage room over here. And then we're back out to where that small chapel area I, I was describing. And these little guys are going to save our energy footprint and, and energy bills. Let me, uh, there'll be stairs, but right now I'm going to use this bucket to get back up here. Um, this will actually be all, all one level and there'll be a rail system running down. Let me move over to here. This is going to be a little jarring for you. There is a massive amount of dirt and a giant trench. That trench is new plumbing that's going to go from our bathrooms to our kitchen and bathroom area. This uh, dug up area will be bathrooms and, and part of our kitchen. Um, and uh, it's going to be all new plumbing. It's going to be uh, all energy efficient stuff. And so in here, you, it, we got some really cool stuff planned. Where all the stock is, is going to be our cafe. We got some really cool stuff. I'm not going to give it away because I want you to see it and not hear about it. I want you to see it first. It's going to be really cool. But I'll take you into the sanctuary. So, the, the, so this is our sanctuary. <laughs> this is our sanctuary. We will fill in that uh, giant ditch. We won't make people uh, leap over here. But I want to show you one of the cool spot, uh, coolest features of our sanctuary. So the stage will be down where that orange lift is down there, that orange skyjack. And uh, you'll see the entrance that I talked about before, that side entrance. And I, I want to point you to these little holes up here in the roof. Because this roof is higher than the other roof, uh, we're able to bring the, uh, the, the air conditioning vents through the side walls. And uh, if you notice, they're square. And then there's uh, black noise insulation in there. And so you remember our blue duct tubes at 40 Kenwood that right in the middle of a the service, they would rumble and pop? <laughs> not, that's not going to happen here. It's going to be really quiet. The roof, the roof units aren't on the sanctuary roof. They're on the other roof. And so we're not going to hear any vibrations or any uh, noise when they kick on and shut off. And then the, the, uh, the air itself is going to be quiet. And so uh, it's, it, it's a... It, So what you think? Loved it. <laughs> if you really liked it, there's a reaction button at the bottom, and you can give us the clapping sign. <laughs> it's um, I think it's quite amazing. I think to see, um, it was hard to picture how you could transform that space, um, the way it's being transformed. So it's much bigger than you thought uh, when you when you uh, kind of kind of space it out with offices and classrooms. It's really quite impressive. Well, let's take a moment to answer some questions. And so uh, this might be hard as there's so many people, but if you, have a, um, if you have a question, feel free to unmute yourself and ask that. I'm gonna put it on speaker view myself so I can just see who is asking the question. George Martin. You only, put, you only said something about one bathroom area. 
Is there more than one bathroom area? Yep, there's a, th there'll be bathrooms in the cafe and in, in that, the, the bigger bathrooms uh, will be the main bathroom area behind the um, guest services desk. Good question. So uh, Mike and Heather, this is Brian. Uh, the timing again, I guess that timing again for well, yeah, so I, I could say we're, we are we are well over the halfway mark. Uh, our frames in, most of our electric uh, electricity's in, our sprinklers are in, our HVAC's in. Um, we're waiting on the plumbing, and the plumbing's holding up the, the uh, inspections that allow yeah, us to drywall everything. Yeah, uh, so yeah. we're, we're getting pretty far away. Uh, I'm not 100% right? mm -hmm. sure when uh, it's going to be ready, and I'm really hesitant to give a guess because it, all, it, uh, all it'll take is one thing to go wrong. <laughs> and so I would love to say, hey, we'll be in there in eight weeks, but it, it, might, be, it might be 10, it might be, uh, it might be 12. Um, so I, I, I'm not really uh, um, um, comfortable hazarding a uh, date. Okay, that's fair. That's really, really exciting stuff. Mm. Thanks, Thank Brian. You. Lori has a question, then Gwen, I think. Anyone? Is there a separate entrance for the offices? There is, yep. Um, yeah, right now there's an old door there. We'll eventually replace that with, uh, you know, a typical glass and aluminum. But, um, yeah, there'll be a separate office entrance. Gwen, did you have a question? You're still muted. Um, in the air conditioning return system, will you be putting in um, a UV light? Oh, for, um, you, you know what I'm, I am lucky that I know that those things are called rooftop units. <laughs> That's about is the, the extent, but uh, I know we're, uh, we're, we're definitely been, been talking about uh, cleaning the air as often as possible. I haven't heard UV light up there, but uh, I can bring that up at our next building. Okay, because it usually goes in the return. And so, for example, I installed them when I moved here. And... Um, um, my understanding is it needs to be wired. And so um, you would, since the walls aren't up, that wiring could go in now. Yep, well, I'll, I'll, definitely, um, I'll, I'll definitely bring that up in our next building uh, meeting, yeah. I think we have a chat question too. I see a couple of them, yeah. So okay. let's, take, uh, let's, take, let's take Sanders first. Uh, we have any more this fall. Yeah, we actually have three. Uh, we're slated for three in October. Um, the 10th, 17th, and 24th. We'll advertise those uh, in, in the coming um, days and weeks. We're going to move the time up, right? Are we talking about that, Mike? What's that? For the, uh, the lawn services, are we changing the time of those? Or what oh, yeah, yeah. We'll be changing them to 5 o'clock. We can't get much earlier than that because uh, we're competing with uh, – we're sharing parking with St. Mary's, and, and they have a 4.30 service, but, but we'll do a 5 o'clock start. Um, uh, Jim, uh, what is the seat, seating capacity in the sanctuary? So, uh, so um, seating capacity uh, during the pandemic um, – versus uh, regular seating capacity. I think we're looking at about 500 or 550 chairs, uh, if, if I remember. And, and we, can, we could double that or, or triple that by having two services or three services. So, um, so our flexibility is we can grow by services. So 550 right now is the um, capacity. Now the COVID capacity, I think phase three, we're at 50%, I believe. We moved from 40% to 50%. Um, and so that would be... Uh, 250. But you know, honestly, um, the, there's also square footage requirements, so it's not that easy. And so uh, when we do have our, our, our first service, uh, we'll probably have to, uh, there's a bunch of things we have to take in effect. Um, one, uh, um, but uh, the, the governor's rules and regulations for square footage and for um, capacity will, will definitely prevail. And we're, we're always going to err on the overcautious side. And so we'll probably use that small chapel room for, for maybe for, for overflow and, and increased capacity. But 
Um, yeah, that capacity one's a little, I think, I think uh, in normal times, 500 plus. Um, during COVID times, I don't know. I don't know what it looked like. Uh, but we will do it in, a ver in, in, in the most safest way possible for anyone who wants to uh, um, take part in an indoor service. There's a question about if we're going to have more than one service, Mike. Uh, probably. <laughs> um, prob yeah, it, it, it all depends on, on uh, what the response is. I'm finding my peers across, across the country who have big buildings. Nobody's coming in, even though they can. And so even though they have uh, the ability to have certain amounts of capacity, what we're seeing is that they're getting 20 to 30% of their congregation back into the building. We might, we might have the same uh, scenario, I don't know. And so if we only get 20% of our, our population back in the building, we may only need one service. Um, or um, or we, we distance so much that we actually need two services right, from the, right out of the gate. So there's a lot involved in that. Hey, Marcus, we, we will absolutely continue to broadcast our service. Actually, when we hit the new building, we're going to have a state-of-the-art sound and uh, streaming system. So it'll look a lot better than uh, Cliff, Heather, and I in, in, in Cliff's office. And so, uh, <laughs> although uh, uh, Cliff did a tremendous job uh, behind the computer today, uh, we'll, we'll have a pretty sweet streaming setup. Someone had a live question. Who was that? Hey, uh, um, Heather's Don Levitt. Oh, hey, Don. How are you? Okay. My question is going to be, um, Mike, um, I know it's all about the interior for sure, but I was just curious, um, is there any plans for the exterior? You know, what's yeah. the exterior going to look at the end of the day? Absolutely. The exterior is, like, terrible, and it's very much on all our minds, but the, um, we're, we're kind of waiting to we cross a certain uh, milestone before we um, address that. And, and that milestone is our certificate of occupancy. We've been so, uh, we had such a hard time with the planning board um, that, that uh, we want to make sure we get our CO, our certificate of occupancy, before we touch the outside. Um, and so as soon as we get that, we'll be first in line at the uh, des design review uh, committee. Uh, um, and and uh, we definitely pl plan to uh, uh, spruce up the, the uh, to swap the sign out for a better sign, to, uh, to uh, repaint um, and, and fix up the general landscaping area. But we're gonna wait until we get that CO. And we all agree that we should have a grill. Yes, <laughs> yes. At least the staff one. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, uh, any plans um, for heightened security, fewer doors? I mean, we can say right now, uh, the design of this building is awesome because it's one main entry. Um, very different from the experience at Kenwood, but do you want to remark on that, Mike? Yeah, so the, the, the entry is better for everybody. It's better for security. It's better for a first-time uh, visitor. Um, uh, we, we all head into one spot, and all the options are available to you right at your eye level. And so there will be, um, there will be emergency doors all over the place, but there will be mostly ex exit doors, except for the... Um, uh, there will be uh, two-way doors in the cafe and uh, a two-way door in the office, but it'll mostly be that main entrance. Good question. These are all great questions. Um, considering Horace Mann for a few weeks, if we can't get in the building, are we doing that? Yeah, so um, uh, we, we thought of that initially, um, and, but we also thought we might be in the building by now. <laughs> <laughs> and so I haven't reached out to Horace Mann. I, um, and uh, um, I, I think the next couple of weeks with the building, uh, we'll we, we really know something a little bit. But uh, um, uh, I, I was hoping that the, uh, the building availability and the back to church would kind of coincide together. Uh, I, we... I, I plan to reach out to uh, Horace Mann, but I, I am very, very skeptical that they will say yes. Um, they were really clear that they didn't want uh, uh, anybody outside using their building um, back when this hit in March and April um, before they shut down. And I don't think they're going to let us back in, but it, uh, I, I'm still going to ask. How many doors total? I don't know how many doors total. Um, let's see. I can count right now. There will be one, two, three four, five, six, seven doors total. Um, 
not all of them, uh, a, a bunch of those, maybe more than half of those will be exit doors, like exit only. Um, someone asked if there's any windows. There's some in the front. Yeah. yeah, we're we're a little window deprived. Um, if we might, we we have the if, if right now we're we're on budget. Um, we're not so much under budget or over budget. We're on budget, and uh, if if uh, we end up being under budget a little bit, then there's an opportunity to add some windows. But until then, uh, um, we're gonna get some good lighting. Yep, we're gonna have some good lighting. There won't be any more windows than what you see now. Um, one more, qu oh, Lori, I'll get to you in one sec. Um, is COVID impacting our budget, Mike? Oh, that's a, <laughs> that, that's a whole other, uh, it, it's, uh, so um, we're trending on the fortunate side. COVID is impacting our budget a, a, a little bit. Um, we, we have a, a mild dip in donations. And I think that's because people just aren't showing up in person in, um, and uh, don't have that memory of, hey, I should, uh, you know, I'm at church, I'm going to make a donation. Um, a lot of people did switch to automatic online donations. It, um, and so, so we've had a little, a little dip. I don't have the numbers offhand. I wasn't ready for a budget question. I should have been, but um, uh, I, I do know that it has, uh, we've been on the mild side, thankfully. Uh, our our, our uh, donations have, have dipped a little bit, but um, I, I have some peers that are really feeling uh, the effects because they're in uh, areas that have uh, more people that were laid off. Uh, we have a lot fewer folks that have lost their job due to COVID uh, than, than some of my peers. Is there a plan for parking and more importantly, the exiting after services? Yes, there will be a plan. <laughs> there will be a plan. Uh, Heather's actually going to be a piece of that plan a little bit um, as the community connection, thinking about from parking lot to uh, seat. But what other you, Paul. <laughs> All right. Oh, Lori, did you have a question, dear? Yes. yes. Will we have a policeman on duty every Sunday? I don't think so. We, we don't plan to do that. That was really expensive, and, and the uh, town made us do that. And uh, I don't think that uh, – sorry, the town didn't make us do that. The school system made us do that because uh, we had over 100 people. Um, uh, we will if traffic becomes a problem. But you can only buy police officers in four-hour increments. And so it, it, it gets pretty pricey. Hmm. I was just thinking of security on the building with everybody in there, just all the things that happen in the country with churches and, yeah. you know, just for our safety. I, I know what you're thinking of the road also, but I was just thinking of our safety. I've got a really good plan. I haven't vetted it with everybody yet, but I was thinking of arming our sixth graders with slingshots. <laughs> Any other questions out there? Oh, Peter, can we use the traffic lights next to CBS? No, but I think that, I mean, I don't, I don't know if we could access them, but, but they are going to be very helpful, actually. Um, so, so getting in uh, to our parking lot, it's not going to be a problem for, for people that the, the tough time will be like, uh, a, you know, the, the 10, 20 minute window of people exiting a service, um, taking a right will be no problem. Taking a left out of our property, that's where the problem will be. And that's where we'll, we'll need some kind of traffic help. Um, and we'll seek, um, the, the advice of the police. And, and figure out whether we um, we need a traffic person, a, a, a town traffic person, or an in-house traffic person. We'll figure all that out. All right, well, thanks everybody. Uh, I'm so glad that you, you joined us. Um, we, we have... Uh, Oh, someone, some, I just admitted someone into the, to the, uh, we have 52 uh, devices on here, which means uh, we, we probably have close to 100 folks. Um, we are going to post this video somewhere. Um, and so for anyone who, who missed it, they can, they could uh, catch it online. 
at their own uh, time. But hey, it's it was really nice seeing you all. Um, and uh, I understand for those of you who muted your video, I understand it's uh, Sunday morning and you could be in your jammies and uh, have uh, have bedhead. But uh, it, for for those of you who had your video up, it, it was it was nice to see y'all. And uh, we look forward to uh, yeah, come on out for the um, the lawn services. Such a huge lawn, we could safely accommodate. Everybody's wearing a mask. Uh, they've been really good times. Might get a little chilly, but we plan to have three in October. Thanks, everyone. Oh, and uh, Heather's mining everybody. Don't forget to fill out the survey in anychapel.org. You can also find signups for the journey there. See you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>